When you first start up Cosmeteer, go with the default difficulty settings. I suggest picking the shielded ship so you don't take a lot of damage and then lose a lot of resources when you're learning how to play the game. Now I personally use a custom built ship. You can ask for them on the Discord or find them on the workshops. Once you hop in the game, head your nearest station, go there and pick up all of the missions. I see people pick and choose one, you want to go for them all. The reason being is because, well, the, the, don't bother with this one, it's just patrol ships. If it, if it were showing you where a uh, station was, you'd get this one. These aren't important. Anyway, what you're trying to do is fill out the exploration missions very quickly to get the reputation so you can get more crew, which is going to be your limiting factor in a lot of things. So accept that. Take a look out. These far out ones are going to be the other stations. You can do the missions as you please. I'm going to go quickly over there and get exploring to it. If you end up completing a mission, like if you go find one of these on your own, which would probably be something like here or here, it's unknown signal. If you complete a mission without having accepted it and you go to the station where it's at, you're still going to get the reward for that mission. These random things around can be all sorts of things. They could be dead ships that you can take over and have your own crew. So that's how you get another ship. The other way to get your another ship is to break off a piece of yours doing an explosive charge. One thing you're going to look for at those question marks is the um, getting uh, any kind of storage stuff. It'd be like a little bin. Anyway, we, as you can see, I got paid for visiting this station, but I also explored a lot of signals. I can go do the other one, except uh, is this a base? Yes, I'll accept the destroyer base. I'll accept the destroyer base. I don't actually have to piss off the other factions yet. I can just completely ignore that. Anyway, uh, these bases are all good. Those are all bases. It rush on over here. You can quickly pick up those stuff. In the meantime, let me tell you about when you're building, you're going to run into issues of uh, if you overbuild, you don't have the crew for something, it's a disaster. And it's going terribly. Because if you if you have, don't have the crew to maintain your shields, don't have the crew to maintain your engines, your whole entire ship is going to be pretty much worthless compared to a smaller ship. Let's take a come look at this ship right here. The crew barely keep it going. That's what your goal is. It's okay to expand a little bit and whatnot. Another thing I want to mention is if you're going into a fight, you'll notice that I run out of energy with this ship. That's something you want to have. But something you want to watch out for is if you have a lot of engines and you just traveled across the system, you're going to not have the right in energy in your engines. So pause right before the fight. Let everything recharge and then move in. For fighting, target important components. You might want to drive your own ship once you get better at this, but when you're in the meantime, just don't. Rush in. This is a dumb fight because there's all this stuff going around, but I'm just showing you guys how to play. Yeah, they did. <coughs> One good thing is you can steal those resources that they damage from the thing. Anyway, as you guys can see, I am taking very little damage because of the shields. Don't forget to use, and now uh, this is a dumb fight for my skill, for my ship level, but you can see how targeting important parts. Now that he has guns, he can't damage me. And then you want to go for the reactor or the control room. After a fight, you can go salvage the enemy's operation and remove their parts and load them into your storage. You can also use those same parts to repair. Now you're not always going to have the stuff you need to repair in the area. And what you do in that case is repair individually. Here we just repair everything and now the crew can bring the rest that that saves your crew the time of having to go pick it up Put it in because it'll just instantly go in stuff like processes are more important. You want to pick those up Anything like sheet metals not that expensive. So don't have a priority for that Now if you're having a lot of stuff like ammo, which is like completely worthless never ever pick it up What you can do is right click And say that you don't want to pick up ammo And now you're not going to waste time Picking up ammo, which you're going to find in like old dead guns and whatnot. Another thing you can do is build in piles of scrap. Here's the leftovers from the station. If this ship lacks storage, so let's hop into blueprint mode because that's better for building. Let's make some space over here. Let's build a storage. You're going to have in the beginning, you're going to your ship's pretty much going to have like a butt of storage at the end. And then you're going to want to move on to having two ships. 
one for storage and mining, the other for your fighting. The crew is going to limit a lot of things. One thing you're going to notice in the ship is how my crew stuff works. Uh, they take the energy and put it in these things, which are all super close. I have nothing far away from the reactor because the further it is, it's not going to work all the time. It's not going to function right. Nothing's going to work. And the crew also need to be close to where the reactor is. In fact, they want to be close to the reactor, not the weapons. Because they go from the reactor to the weapons, not the weapons to the reactor first. Now you notice this is far away, there's no space up there. But all these guys who use chairs are just sitting there doing nothing. So it's okay to have them far away. You want people that do that marked specially. So they're going to choose the operator roles over anything else. If you are getting attacked in the middle of a fight, you can recall your crew very quickly using this button. And they all come back. This station is a station rescued. It's like a regular station. Anyway, at stations, also accept all these missions just like we did earlier. It'll help you fill out your stuff. You notice you can buy and sell and trade stuff. You are, rare, are pretty much only ever going to be buying like hypercoils and this kind of stuff. You want to try avoiding having to buy the rest. It's and especially in your early game, you're going to want to hire crew if they die or unlock new blueprints. You can't actually build the stuff until you unlock it. So here I'm going to unlock a heavy phaser blaster. That's how you start upgrading. And I'm going to go in here with all the stuff on the ground. This is a very lucky find for early in the game. I can just slap these down. That is going to change things a little bit because it has a very different energy need. Now, reality that was a terrible idea because of the lack of energy on this reactor. You need to start upgrading reactors early on. It's expensive, so you might find yourself using ammo or something like that, a different kind of gun. One thing you're going to note is in bigger ships, you're going to use corridors because these things right here are rather slow. You walk through anything here with half speed versus something like a corridor, those you travel through much faster. In order to get around the system faster, you're going to use your hyperdrive to jump around. This is not always used because it can be expensive, but it can be convenient on smaller explorer ships such as this one. Just click hyper jump and you can jump to any of the things that are bouncing around. That's stations, hyper jump relays, not the enemy stations obviously, or uh, hyper jump beacons. In order to go to a different system, in this case we're going to be going to Ephesus right here. You click plot hyper jump, click on the place you're going, return to your galaxy, and you'll notice that this thing lights up. So what we want to do is go over there. You, you can you can fly over there, but it's also very easy to just jump to where it's at. You can also note you can plot hyper jumps far out. It's just going to be more expensive, and I always do one at a time because of game progression. But you can go really far if need be. Once you get over to the relay, right click on it, and then your thing's going to fill up. These ships are not here, so they're staying. And when you're ready to jump, push engage. It's going to fly you on over. I am cutting through a lot of this loading time, by the way. And now we're in a new system. If you're using rooftop stuff, such as cannons, tractor beams, or sensor arrays, they collide. As you can see here, I have an array of cannons. But shoot them they all fire but if I shoot them like this you notice only that end one fires another thing you want to keep in mind is ammo for any kind of cannon based weapon they have ammo once they run out of ammo they just don't fire it's over I should set them all to fire and we go for that anyway another important thing to pay attention to is fire extinguishers fire extinguishers are make make a big difference in your ship because once it lights on fire it slowly disintegrates Fires travel much more quickly through corridors and they travel through doors. So if you have too many doors, that's a problem. Notice how I only have one door on these guys. Everything and notice door placement is very important. Do not have your doors automatically placed. That's just gonna place awkward doors, create issues and whatnot. It's better to place them yourself. One more thing is your control rooms are very important to protect. Once they go offline or you get blown up, it's pretty much over for you. Let's self-destruct and show you what happens. In fact, I need to self-destruct too. You know, bigger ships, you're gonna have redundancy in case a part breaks. 
But now that I don't have those control rooms, I just simply cannot fly the ship. It does not go anywhere. Let's repair that and fix it all. Anyway, another important thing to notice is if you're making a diagonal ship, change your flight direction. As you can see now, when I push forward, this ship flies diagonally. Kind of, because of the thrust it's built a certain way. But you know what I mean. Here's just some of the many examples of the variety of ships you can be making in Cosmeteer with a lot of different strategies, tactics. They're all very complicated. Well, most of them, not all, but you know what I mean. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the view. Let me know if there's anything you want me to do a tutorial on next. Anything you want me to expand upon. I'll be making like tips and tricks, focusing on different weapons, different strategies. And just let me know what you want to see first. I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day.